another goodie from my trip to Japan. These are Kisho Gensai Tambi watercolor. So if you guys are familiar with, say, the Kuratake Gensai Tambi watercolor, or even the Mozart Komorebi, then you already have kind of an idea of what we're looking at. And I purchased these open stock, and I purchased them not knowing what brand they were. I was just willing to roll the dice and take a risk, and I knew they were not Kuratake. Now, the setup in the store was really neat. It was um, those sort of clear acrylic drawers, and they were laid out by color, and there was like 100 of them. Well, probably more like 72 of them, because 72 seems to be the extent of the range. And you cannot find these, to my knowledge, open stock here in the US, but you can find the sets on Amazon. Um, it's K-I-S-S-O or K-I-S-S-O-H. And I will have a link in the description below where you can get them. Um, I don't know yet if they are better than the, the Kuratake against Saitambi, but I happen to have the Gensai Tambi and the Como Rebi right here. So we can do a comparative test and find out. So when I was selecting open stock colors, I selected for colors that would be most useful for me as a watercolor artist. And I tend to have some things I always go for when I'm testing out watercolors. So I got, I should have gotten two yellows. I should have gotten a cool yellow and a warm yellow, but I got a middle of the road yellow. I got a cool red. I got two different warm reds. So hopefully one of these is like a pink or a magenta. I got a cerulean blue. I got a Prussian-esque blue, a warm blue, and a nice purple. I got a nice sort of teal green because these are Gansai Tambi watercolors, so it's okay to get opaques. Just the style of coloring used for Gansai Tambi sort of lends itself to that. I got a green gold, which is one of my favorite colors, and then two cooler greens, great for painting foliage. I got a yellow ochre, a burnt sienna-esque color, and then two darker browns, one of them's probably a sepia, knowing me. Now, I've been using Google Translate to sort of help me with some of this because I cannot, unfortunately, read kanji, hiragana, katakana, Roma well, I can read romanji, but um, <clears throat> I am not skilled enough to be able to read what's on these. So I've been using Google Translate and the help of some friends who are actually able to read Japanese. So I am going to translate all of these color names because they do have some really nice, interesting names. And I remember that was what kind of drew me to the individual colors. Check back in with you guys. I was going to do this off camera, but I want to show you guys how mm, this is not as easy a tool as you would think. All right, so I'm doing it in live mode. I am trying to translate the color name. Let's see if we actually get anything. Nope. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna go to the mode where we take a picture of it and then upload that. And it's kind of finicky about which way works best. So I've got my picture of my packaging. Google Translate, we're gonna go to our image gallery Yamaibu is what it says. So I'm gonna double check this against Google just to make sure that is a word that could be a color name. And Yamaibu seems to refer to a small yellow, it's actually very commonly a person name, but it seems to refer to a small yellow flower. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. This is a very pretty yellow. Yamaibu seems to be a very pretty yellow flower. So I'm gonna do the rest of the colors off camera and check back in with you guys. This one for number 29 is claiming no Japanese text found. So it is going to be difficult for me. Awesome. Apparently it's just red. So here's another one that Google Translate is really having trouble with. This is a nice sort of brownish red color, right? Um, Google Translate swears this is conclusions 
or it's Red Who, but it's very insistent that it's one of the two. I even tried putting my uh, Kuretake Genzai Tambi underneath just to like have a solid surface because it also keeps trying to read my Ink Central's craft mat as like just a series of numbers. So I guess we've entered the matrix. What I think it probably is, and you guys are totally welcome to correct me, is I think it is probably either red ochre or Venetian red. I am sure red is in the name because obviously the color and, uh, or yeah, red ochre or Venetian red would be my guesses for that. So let me know kindly if I'm wrong. Now, part of the reason I'm pointing these errors out to you guys is it's kind of funny what what Google Translate thinks this is. Um, Google Translate has been known to have problems with um, Asian lettering uh, systems, Asian alphabets, especially ones that are read vertically rather than horizontally. Those of you who have used Google Translate know it really wants to only read horizontally. I thought I would have an easier time with this because it's all kind of horizontal. Uh, it's still kind of struggling. So this is one, an area to point out where this still needs work. And two, I know a lot of us are very interested in trying art supplies from other countries, ordering art supplies online or going elsewhere and purchasing art supplies, especially because they're cheaper. And while Google Translate can be a big help and it can really get you kind of going in the right direction, you absolutely can't rely on it entirely. And um, I just thought it would be kind of fun to share that experience with you guys kind of prep some of you I know some of you are actually planning on traveling elsewhere um, even to Japan for you know to also indulge in art supplies I'm sure no one is going to Japan just for art supplies but to also indulge in art supplies so it's probably pretty helpful if you're going to buy especially if you're going to buy to resell which is not my plan at all um, if you're going to buy to be able to read or to be able to at least translate really easily. Another fun example, Google Translate, and I'll pull this close so you guys can see it, says this is deciduous tea. Now deciduous tea apparently does exist. Maybe it's deciduous tree. Maybe it's evergreen. Maybe it really does refer to the tea. So maybe this is actually a very nice, very dark green. I remember when I was purchasing these, I was thinking about like um, more traditional Japanese sort of colors like bamboo or um, fur, etc. So I was kind of buying things with those kind of names because it's harder to get those sort of things over here and that tends to be a color palette I really enjoy. So this might not be a brown, it might actually be a green, which would make some sense because this is kind of, whatever, whatever. I'm just trying to recreate my own thinking patterns. So for now, number 50 is deciduous tea. I also want to make it clear that I'm not making fun of any of the actual names. I am more making fun of how ridiculously off Google Translate is. For example, 139 is apparently this indigo, not just indigo, but this indigo. Or maybe it's telling me that this is indigo. I don't really know, but it's probably just plain indigo, which would put it at the end of my blues, which means I only got two browns. What was I thinking? Or this blue, number 21, which I will hold up so you guys can read the kanji, is apparently called white group. I'm sure it's not called white group. I'm going to keep digging on that one. Nope, still thinks it's white group. This is gonna be one that I need the help of an adult for. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, since Google Translate was just being Google Translate, is I think I'm going to send good photos to a couple of my friends who are a little more fluent than I am in Japanese. I'm also going to post them to my Twitter and see if anybody can help me out. So I'm going to give you guys the names that Google Translate plus Google, just Google Flu gave me. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through and give you guys the correct names. And hopefully there's a lot of correct names, but it'll be fun to find out. So hang on till the end of the video when I'll have the correct names for you guys. But here we go. We have Yaimo, Yamaibu, which is a type of yellow flower, coral color, deep red and red, loess, 
which is apparently part of the Yellow River region in China, and it refers to sort of the color of the earth there. So this makes a lot of sense. And then Google Translate swears this is both conclusions and red who. Uh, so it's probably a red ochre or a Venetian red. Then Google Translate swears this is something called white group, which, okay. And I could not get it to give me any other translation. Uh, this is ultramarine. This is Asami. Asami is uh, typically a girl's name. It can mean various things, but the one I think it probably refers to in this instance is morning sea because this is kind of a fresh blue color and morning sea definitely seems like a color I would buy. This is purple and this is this indigo. Next is the metabolism or flower white green. I'm leaning towards flower white green and it probably refers to a specific type of flower. Uh, nightingale, which I could see that because um, when I bought some of the, whatever, there's green warbler was one of the names. So it's probably green warbler or nightingale. Um, group green. No, wait, patina, which makes sense because patinas tend to be green, then group green, then deciduous tea. And we're gonna go over this again after we do the swatching because I know in the boxes, this is not exactly the easiest situation to see the colors. Also, as wacky as some of this is, as weird as some of these names are, I honestly have enjoyed using Google Translate to try and translate all of these names. It's been like a fun scavenger hunt. So please, if I seem to have a tone in my voice, I'm just excited. Like, I'm like a little puppy, like yeah, 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 yeah. But I do want to be able to provide the actual color names for these watercolors. So that is important to me and I don't wanna misrepresent them in any way. So please don't take this as frustration. Please don't take this as mocking the actual color names because I'm absolutely not. Um, just take this as me having fun with Google Translate and recreating an experience for you guys to give you guys an idea of what to expect or what you could expect if you went to say Japan and expected Google Translate to do your translation for you. So I am going to de-sleeve one of these. Are they taped in? This one didn't want to move. What is going on with you, yellow? I hope to keep the ah, sleeves just super tight. Ba -ba! Okay, so we have our packaging. I like our open stock packaging. On the other side, it says Kisho, and it also has the color, number, and name printed on it, which is super duper handy. So I don't have to keep the packaging. because some wonderful designer was smart enough to be like, hey, let's print all of the information for them so they can replace it with both the correct brand and the correct name. And hey, in case they don't speak Japanese, we'll put a number on there so they can still find what they're looking for. I'm telling you, that sort of attention to detail always makes me really, really happy. And the fact that you can get these open stock, at least in Japan, is also really cool. Not everybody wants to buy a big set. Not everybody needs a big set. Sometimes you just need a few colors. These are also very inexpensive. They're very affordable. I got this from Tokyo Hans. I got this in Kyoto and I paid like under $2 per half pan, which I think for nice watercolors, is a pretty good deal, especially for open stock, because you know you always pay a little bit more when you're buying something that's open stock. And I know, having read Amazon reviews, some people were really unhappy when their Kuratake again Saitambi watercolors have these kind of the crazing going on. That is a natural part of the drying process as it continues to evaporate. It's just a thing that's gonna happen. I'm sorry if you don't like it for aesthetic reasons, but I would hope you're not just buying art supplies for that sweet artist aesthetic life. Cause I will tell you the reality is a mess and messy supplies and you just, you just live with it and you're fine with it. As long as they perform the way they're supposed to perform, there's nothing wrong with the crazing or sometimes even cracking. It's only when it starts to like actually fall out of the pan and become difficult to use that that can be a problem. 
All right, friendos, it is swatching time. So usually these would be used on edigame paper, which is a washi paper that handles very differently from Western watercolor paper. But for the purposes of swatching, I am going to use fluid cold press cellulose based watercolor paper. And you totally can use Western watercolor papers with Gansai Tombi style watercolors. There is no rule in the book that says you cannot, but I would recommend that you do try it on edigame paper and you do give edigame style watercolor painting a try. I think you guys will really like it. Um, I do them on occasion and I love them. They're so fun. And I have a few videos here on this very channel. See if I can get it all in for you guys. Doot, doot, doot. And for our swatching, I will use a Yatsutomo Sumi brush because why not? We've got 16 colors to swatch today. And unlike with Western watercolors, I find that Ganzai Tambe watercolors do best when you don't preactivate them. And that's just due to sort of the makeup, how these tend to be made. They have a different binding agent than Western style watercolors, which to me makes them handle a little bit like they've got a lot of glycerin in them. But it also, oh, you know what I did not do? I goofed. I did not do my opac opacity test. So I'm gonna have to retest yellow because I'm a big old goofer. But that's only one of 16. I got this. So I'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we will resume. All right, let's give this another shot. Ooh, color, coral color is really pretty. I thought it was gonna be more like a scarlet red, but it really is a coral with a little bit of opacity to it. It's hard to tell because my pigment ink is trying to do a resist with it, but I can see there's a little bit of opacity to it. This would honestly work really, really well as a watered, like very watered down as like a very easy skin tone. So it's almost sort of a burnt sienna color. And after I swatch all these, I will go through and go over the color numbers. I won't go over the color names because I am currently in the process of sussing out the actual translations with a couple friends of mine. And I also did ask Twitter, but my friends are even faster, so. Huge thanks to Heidi and to Kabocha for being super awesome friends who probably should not be helping me suss out the color names at this moment, but are because they're as nerdy as I am. And super huge thanks to Heidi because Heidi sent me a website full of tra traditional, traditional Japanese colors and traditional Japanese color names. And it's like looking at a list of all my favorite things, all my favorite colors seriously beautiful colors. I really want to put together. I know the Iridori line from Holbein aims at doing that. I really want to put together like a palette of all my favorite paints with those colors in it. Because a lot of them are just beautiful muted colors. It's like literally my aesthetic right there. This is going to be another one with some opacity to it. It's actually a very beautiful color. And these are cloudying up my water really quick. So, I mean, obviously a lot of these colors are intended to be opaque, semi-opaque, that sort of thing, or just semi-transparent. They're not necessarily intended to be fully transparent because that's ooh, not necessarily something you need for edigame painting. And while I was in Japan, I also bought a bunch of edigami papers because I'm currently using the Akashia edigami paper and I really like it, but I'm running low on it. So I wanted to try some other brands because that was, you know, the first, the first brand I'd ever purchased. I wanted to find out if it was the best or if I just, there are other options out there. Ooh. 
you know, sometimes your first love is the one for you. Ooh, that purple. And then sometimes you gotta see what else is out there. And when it comes to me and art supplies, there is no monogamy. Ooh, that indigo is so pretty. It's more like a neutral kind of shade than a, say, a true. Well, I guess I should say an American indigo because it might actually be a very traditional sort of indigo shade for Japan. And we may just get a different, since we have a different species that we use for dyeing in the West, typically, it might just be like that kind of a variation. Different types of wood plants. Oh, will it fit? Probably not. It sure is a really pretty rainbow of color. Which one is your favorite? Okay, I just got two more. Surely I can do this. I believe in the me who believes in me. Ooh, if this color wasn't named fir tree, I'd be surprised or something like that. It is deciduous tea. So I feel like I'm 50% there. Okay, this one looks like it's gonna be brown, which is good. Oh, good, thank goodness. I was like, I definitely need a sepia. I can't believe I didn't buy a sepia. I bought a sepia, or at least something that will function as a sepia. And these are some really beautiful colors. I wonder how they compare to the palette in the Kuratake again side, Tombi. And then there's even another manufacturer, uh, Boko Undo does them as well. And I'm sure there's way more in Japan, but I mean, these are the three we kind of have available. I think Akashia also does a set. So I'm gonna let these dry and then check back in with you guys. So our watercolors have dried. And what I think is particular neat, particularly neat is this color here has a beautiful sort of blue and green separation. It's a little more noticeable in real life. Um, a little harder to see on the camera, but it's gorgeous. So we are gonna go through the colors. And unfortunately for me, I'm going to have to turn them over. So I'm gonna be really careful. So we have here number 13 and I want to line the colors up. We'll see how well I do with that. We have here, what, 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 This one doesn't have any sticker at all? What? That seems to be a one-off. I, this is coral red. So fortunately, I've been keeping a list. This is number 43, coral colors. So I'm gonna fix this. I just, I just can't, like, I just can't not have the names on there. If there's names available, I got, even though the chances of me, like, going to Japan again and getting refills is probably, like, in the next five years, I still want that option. All right, 116. 29. Two. This one is also a guilty party. Again, though, I have the name for this. And I have the correct name for this. I'm excited to share it with you guys at the end of the video. So I'm gonna move. So you guys can't see it. Really milk that reveal. This is number 21 have the correct name for that now as well. Naruto fans will be excited. Number seven. Number 17. Number 18. Ah, another one. This is this indigo. Gotta be causing me problems, this indigo. And it's loose, so I'm like hesitant to turn it over because. Out it pops like a delicious little candy. So it's 139, this indigo. Really this indigo? You gotta be, you gotta be like that. It looks like delicious candy. What is with me in watercolors looking like candy? Number five, 
number 26, number 6, number 44, number 50. And just for the rundown, we're going to go through the Google Flu names. And then we're going to go through the actual names for these at the end of the video. So hang tight, that is coming. Yamaibu, Coral Color, Deep Red, which is not a deep red actually, Red, Loess, uh, <laughs> Red Who, White Group, Ultramarine Asami, Purple, this indigo, the metabolism or flower white green, nightingale, patina, group green, and deciduous tea. The next thing I want to do is actually set this up as a palette. So I'm going to get them into the order. I'm going to want roughly, I'm going to put deciduous tea in. Not the Dragon Ball character. Ba -ba. And since I don't have a palette for this, I'm actually using a peppermint bark container that I scavenged. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna use washi tape to hold them in place. And it's a little deeper than I would usually be comfortable with uh, doing a palette for. So what I think I might do is I think I might actually grab the lid and do my palette on the lid. As you guys can see, it is a super cute tin and we got it on Slick Deal, so it was actually delicious and cheap, which is like my MO. Let's see. Yeah, that's a little deep for me to be really comfortable with. So I think if we do it on the lid, we need to leave room all around the border so that we can get the lid back on. Gonna do a couple of nice fat pats. I'm also going to make a map, a color map, and I'm gonna label the color map with the color numbers, and that way I have everything. Is it even gonna fit? Let's find out. Okay, let's our one. The ones I'm concerned about is this bottom right here. Is there any way I can make it work? Do you like my screams of consternation? I'm thinking I could put the more opaque ones in the middle. And that would free up. Oh, I can make it work. I'm a genius, you guys. I am a genius. And then we're gonna try and get that lid back on. Ha ha! It'll work, cause I'm the best. We'll leave it at that so I don't get a copyright strike. And don't worry, I'm not gonna make you guys watch me do the entire thing. Just want to kind of demonstrate the method for my madness. It's really fun kind of repurposing nice tin containers like Altoid tins or peppermint bark tins into watercolor containers. For some reason, it's just really satisfying for me to be able to home my watercolors in something I didn't have to pay for. I know in some of my other watercolor reviews, you guys see me use a lot of Meaden and Hanbei tins. Um, that's just because I literally didn't have what I was looking for around the house. Although it would honestly be cheaper to just go buy an Altoids tin and a bulk pa package of half pans and go from there. And then I'm gonna start my bottom row and then I'll tape from there. And I don't just save like any old tin that wanders into my life. I only save the cute ones, the nice ones. Um, I don't save like random cardboard boxes. I don't save random plastic containers unless I like the look and it suits my needs. Because if you're kind of ashamed to bring it around or if you're ashamed to pull it out, 
then it's not actually suiting its purpose. It would be nice if I could leave room in here for a brush, but to be really honest, I don't necessarily like uh, leaving brushes in with my watercolors just because I kind of grab brushes from a set, not a set, but like I have a container of brushes, right? So it's easier for me not to leave my favorite brushes in sets and I also don't necessarily plan on bringing this around as a travel set. All right, so I'm gonna do the rest of this in time-lapse. So the swatches have dried. These are gonna live in the lid of this tin container. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that washi tape on all four sides. You could also use double stick tape. It really doesn't matter at this point. Just to help secure it. And it's going to be stored large side up since we're using the lid as our actual container. All right, so this little palette is all set up. I say little, it's not little, but it's also not overly large. And now, finally, do 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 do, we're going to go over the actual names for these colors. I know this is what you guys have been waiting for, with bated breath even. So, Yamaibu, coral color. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. Yamaibu, coral color, deep red, red, los, and then this is actually Taishan red, and it's named after a mountain in China. Another reading of this could be mountain red. Now, this is what we thought was white group. It's actually Bakugan, and which is literally translated to white group, but it could also be translated as white flock. So Naruto fans, I promised you guys a reference. There it is. It is the same color as Neji and Hinata's eyes. And it's actually named the same name. I guess that's why Kishimoto got the name from there. Uh, Ultramarine, Asami, which we're reading as Morning Sea. Purple, indigo, and then this was what we thought might be the metabolism or flower white green. It's actually bright flower green. Nightingale or warbler, patina, and then this was what we thought was group green. It's actually flock green. And then finally, what we thought was deciduous tea is tea leaf. <laughs> so I can kind of see how Google Translate got some of those names. Some of them are overly literal translations. I'd like to thank Kabocha and Electric Abyss slash Heidi for their help in helping me translate these. They were super fast and super kind to spend the time helping me out and I really appreciate it. Uh, Heidi also sent me this really cool site which is about, um, it's irocore.com and it's about traditional Japanese colors, which I mean, that color palette is just like my aesthetic. It's all of the colors I like the best. So I'm gonna link you guys that in case you're interested, some of these colors were picked to be, you know, from the traditional Japanese color palette. And I am interested in utilizing traditional Japanese colors. So maybe we'll see more of that in the future. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Unfortunately, in the US, the only kind of common provider for these Kisho Gansai Tombi watercolors is Amazon and it is the 72 piece set and it's a little bit over $102. So it is quite a pricey investment. They are absolutely beautiful though. And I did promise you guys some comparison swatches. So these are my Gansai Tombi, my Kurataki Gansai Tombi swatches. Let's see if I can get everything in the shot. And then these are the Kisho. And the Kisho seem like they might be just a little bit more saturated than the Gansai Tombi. And some of the colors do differ. Um, now, to be fair, I did not buy the whole set of uh, Kisho Gansai Tombi. So this isn't really a one-to-one -one comparison. It's just kind of a general comparison of colors that are in common from both sets. And before I say goodbye, I'm gonna pull out my Como Rebi, my Gansai Tombi, and the Kisho Gansai Tombi watercolors, and we'll take a look at all three sets. So here we have the Kuretake Gansai Tombi, here we have the Mozart Como Rebi, and here we have the Kisho Gansai Tombi. You can find an unboxing swatch for this and this here on the channel, as well as edigame tests for both of these and a Western style watercolor test for the Como Rebi here on the channel. Move this so we can get the lighting a little bit better. The Como Rebi are slightly larger than Western hole pans, but they are still significantly smaller than both the Kisho and the Kuratake. The Kuratake is much more ubiquitous in the US. More people are gonna, are gonna carry it. You're not gonna have as hard a time finding it. And the pans are about the same size. And both of them typically, I know I covered this with tape, but as you guys can remember, typically have the color number and the color name on the bottom. Both are available in Japan open stock, but you can get the Kuratake um, in very small sets. You can also get it in kind of a micro pocket palette, which seems really cool. And you can get them open stock from a couple of places. We're not really gonna discuss the open stock price simply because you can't get the Kisho open stock here in the US, unfortunately. So it's not really fair to compare the two. The Como Rebi are only available in this set of 40 and I paid around $25 for the set of 40. So it was really a very affordable set. So I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing swatch for the Kisho watercolors. I hope you guys will stick around on this channel to check out the field test. I'm going to do an edigami style field test and I'm also probably going to do a Western style field test just because I love to paint and it's a good excuse to do so. I hope you guys will check out my other watercolor reviews also here on this channel and check out some of my watercolor tutorials over at natosoup.com natosoup.blogspot.com. If you love watercolor and you enjoy watercolor art, I highly recommend you also check out my watercolor comic, 7-Inch Kara. You can check that out at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. I want to thank my patrons yet again for their generosity and support. It is only with their help that I am able to afford some of the materials that are utilized in these field tests. And I'd also like to thank Joseph Coco for his continued support and encouragement in recording these unboxings and these unboxings box and swatches. So I hope you guys have a great day. This was another product from my Japan haul. So if you're interested in art supplies from Japan, you need to check that playlist out as well. I'll see you guys again really soon. Have a great day, guys. Bye.